you may be asked to sign in. And once sign in has completed, you'll be shown the dashboard. The dashboard will show you a variety of information, such as your previous transactions. What we're concerned about with right now is how to create a transaction. So on the right hand side, click Create a Transaction. This opens up the Create Transaction menu. There are two mandatory items that are required, the name and the template. The name refers to what you'd like to refer to this transaction as. So what you can do is you can say a tenant name and property address. The template, there's a variety of templates provided by Zolo, both residential and commercial. Depending on the type of offer you're placing, select the relevant template. In this case, we're going to be doing an offer lease. By selecting the template, you'll see that the Add Me as the Cooperating Salesperson was auto-populated. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck Use Wizard at this time. You also have the optional uh, Import Data section. The Import Data section allows you to select the relevant board where your subject property is listed. In this case, it's listed in the Toronto Real Estate Board. And it asks you to input the MLS number. I'm going to do that now. Once all of the information looks correct, you want to click Create. The first screen you will see after the system is finished loading is the Details page. The Details page, you can review any address information, which was auto-populated using the Import Data feature, and also the seller name. So in this case, because it's a lease, the seller is actually a landlord. If you did not choose to import any data, you can input the address information now. After you've made any changes to the section, click the check mark to save any changes. Next, we're going to hop over to Forms. Now remember, this is a lease and we chose Zolo Offer Lease. So all of the lease forms were auto-selected for this transaction. Let's start by hopping into the confirmation of co-op. Here you can confirm all of the imported fields are populating in the correct fields on the form. And you can input manual data. So in this case, we don't have the buyer information input yet, or in this case, the tenant info. So let's go tenant name as the name of the tenant. For the purposes of this demonstration, I will not be showing you how to properly input form data. Uh, it's always relevant to your particular situation. But there is a feature that I'd like to highlight, which is that if you input tenant name once in any form, you won't have to input that information again in another form. So using the top menu over here, I'm going to jump into a different transaction form to show you that the tenant name was transferred over to another form. Here we go. Tenant name is now tenant name. You can hop through and input other information as well. And any relevant information that populates on other fields, on other forms, will also be populated on other fields like the tenant name was. So once you're done, what you want to do is click File and Exit. 